Good morning, church. It's great to be with you guys today. I hope you're having a great morning. My, yeah, you could clap. That's exciting. My name is Ricky Hemi. I serve as one of the pastors here, and I have the privilege right now of giving you an update on all that God did in 2019 and also painting a little bit of a picture of what's to come in 2020. So this is something that we do at the beginning of every year. So I have a little presentation about 10 minutes long called the state of the church. You guys ready? Here we go. Now here, just in review, who are we at Central? Well, our mission at, at Central is transforming families to live and love like Jesus. And the way that we do that is through the strategy of gather, grow, and impact. Gather for weekend worship. Grow through small groups and other ministries that foster discipleship and impact by sharing your story, reaching your impact list, using your spiritual gifts. So that's our strategy. A new thing that we introduced this year are the five marks of a growing disciple. Those marks are daily devotion, prayer, time with believers, generous living, and sharing your story. And so you've heard these from Pastor Matt. And if you're in any ministry in our church, you're going to hear about these marks because these are the things that we want to see developed in the lives of the people who call Central home. Now, I want to bring some clarity on the mission statement. On occasion, I get asked the question of why do we aim at families? It's a valid question. And sometimes I even get asked, is that mission too narrow? Well, I want to tell you why we aim at families. I have three reasons. The first is that if you read your Bible from cover to cover, you're going to learn that God has a history of working through families. This starts all the way back in the book of Genesis. In Genesis 1.26, God creates the man and the woman, and he sends them off with this cultural mandate to be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. God's mission for the world was accomplished through families. You fast forward to Genesis chapter 12. God calls a guy named Abraham. He says to Abraham, he says, I'm going to give you a family and your family is going to turn into a nation. And through your family, through your seed, your bloodline, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed. You fast forward to the New Testament. We just went through the book of Acts with Pastor Matt. What we see in Acts is this pattern of household conversions. Not just one person from a house coming to Christ, but the entire household, the oikos, the extended family coming to Christ. And we also see Peter, his famous sermon at Pentecost. He says to the people that God's promises are for you and your children. So God has a history of working through families. We also know, though, that our enemy attacks families as his number one attack on the church. One of Satan's primary strategies for destroying lives is to attack the family. And when the family is strong, society is stronger. But when the family is weak, society suffers. Satan goes after the family. Now, the good news, something that we all realize, is that no family is perfect. That's good news because you're probably sitting here today thinking like, man, I've seen Satan attack my family. No family is perfect, okay? We live in a broken world. No family is perfect. And one thing that we want you to know, when we say we're aiming at families, we don't expect you to have this perfect nuclear family. Your spouse, two kids, and a dog, and a cat living outside, okay? We don't expect that. We know that families are messier than that, and also that cats don't count in the family. We understand that, okay? So... Reality, am I there? Okay, in reality, families are way messier than that. They are. They come in all different shapes and sizes. And whatever your family looks like, you are welcome here. We invite you to be a part of our family. And one thing I want you to take hope in is just knowing that even the greatest figures in the Bible had messed up broken families. And the good news of scripture, the good news of the gospel is that God is at work taking isolated, hurting, and broken people and adopting them into his forever family. You were created to have a family. Whether you have a family around you right now or not, you were created for a family. If you don't have one around you, we are going to be that family for you. If you do have a family around you, we want to invest and help that family mature and grow in Christ with you. And so that's part of reaching 
families. And finally, we minister to families because ministering to families models the importance of family for future generations. Listen, we have a lot of young people growing up in our church. And if they don't learn to value family in this church, they will not learn it anywhere else. They will not learn the value of family in our culture today. And so we take that seriously to help promote that value here at Central. So what has happened in our family in 2019? Well, if you look inside of your bulletin, you're going to see a piece of paper folded in half with some stats on 2019, some cool things that went down this past year. I'm going to highlight a couple of them. Our average attendance in 2019 was 1,365 people. So that's very exciting. First time guests in 2019, 514 Salvations in 2019, 102. Yes, 102. Now, I study churches. I'm back in school again. I study churches. And I don't know if you know this, but close to 80% of churches in the U.S. are either plateaued or declining. Many churches in the U.S. don't even experience one baptism in a fiscal year. Many churches don't see one salvation in a year of their church. We've seen 102 just in 2019, 71 baptisms. So I just want to say thank you for helping make an impact through Central. 78 new members. If you haven't become a member yet, We have membership next week in the gallery right over there. It's during the Sunday service. We want you to be there. This is a great time to plug in. Find your role in the church. I'll be teaching you the class with some others. So join us. You could sign up on the back of your Connect card right now for membership. Please become a member. Now, uh, here's a history of our budget over the past five years. Over the past five years, you can see that our budget was steadily climbing, and then it started to dip. Now, that could be a little discouraging until you see this next chart that our income has actually gone up. So if you look at 2015 to 2017, we had a projected budget. We came short of those budget numbers. Now, what I want you to know is if we come up short of our budget, we're not meeting our projected budget, then we stop spending, okay? So we don't spend more than we bring in. We don't go into debt as a church. But it does freeze up ministry. It it freezes up uh, things that we're trying to accomplish, and and we have to stop doing things. The cool thing, though, is that in 2018 and 2019, we actually ended just ahead of budget. So that is very, very exciting stuff. That means our ministries had a plan for the year. They were able to carry out that plan through the entirety of the year. They were able to stay focused, try new things, because we had the funds to support the work. And so thank you so much for being generous. Now, here, yeah, that's really exciting. Now, here is the budget for 2020. The budget for 2020 is $2,592,857. I have a pie chart here that demonstrates how that budget is allocated. 56% of this budget goes directly to funding ministries in this church. So if you're a part of any ministry in this church, this is where the budget is coming from, this part of the pie chart. That includes women's ministry, men's ministry, CR, youth ministry, kids ministry, weekend worship. 56% goes straight to ministry in this church. The next slice of the pie is the facilities, which is actually kind of high. We have a big campus. We have a lot of property. And so it costs a lot of money just to upkeep what we have. 24% of our budget just goes to maintaining what we've got, keeping the lights on here, making things work. But this next number is really exciting because it's actually very rare. I said I studied churches, and this is something that's very rare. 20% of our budget goes to missions. That includes our partners around the globe who are reaching lost pockets of the world, planting churches, and it also includes work here in the AV where we haven't yet uh, established a, a, a relationship or a church, and we're trying to reach people in new pockets of the community. 20% goes to gospel work. So that is what happens when you give here at Central. So that's exciting, <laughs> exciting stuff. And I wish I had the salvation and baptism numbers for our gospel partners around the globe because those numbers would probably far surpass even our own. So thank you for supporting Central. Now I'm going to speed up here. I'm trying to go fast. Uh, So we're studying our community and our church. We want to be 
suited for our church. We want to make an impact on our community. And so what do we know about our community and our church? Number one is the primary zip codes attending this church are 93536 and 93551. The population of those two zip codes is 128,000 people. I said we have close to 1,400 people on a weekend. Are we done yet? We have a long way to go. There are half a million people in the Antelope Valley. We have a long way to go. Now, what do we know about the Antelope Valley? Well, one is that it's extremely high when it comes to diversity, higher than the national average. We have more millennials in this community than the national average. But even on top of all of that, what's interesting is that the lifestyle of our community is traditional established families. Well, what do those families want? What are they concerned about? We've learned that the families in our community are concerned about good schools, long-term financial security, recreation and leisure, fun things to do, fulfilling marriages, parenting skills, and concern with neighborhood crime and safety. I show you that because when we do things as a church, we want to tackle some of those concerns in our community. We want to be a church that impacts our community. And what we know is that one thing that our community needs is help with marriages, and so we launched Reengage. We know that one thing our community needs is help with, with, uh, with their kids and, and investing in their kids, and so we have an amazing kids' ministry, and we have a Learning Planet preschool. There, we know that people want to have fun as a family, so we do big family events. There are things that we try to do to meet the needs of our community. Now, I surveyed our community, and I surveyed some people in our church, and I wanted to know from the perspective of others, what are the strengths of Central, and where are some opportunities from gro- for growth? These are the strengths that were identified in these surveys. The strengths include biblical preaching. Okay, so each week you come to Central, you're going to hear our pastor open up his Bible and preach from the Word. Let's give it up for Pastor Matt. That's amazing. Now, you would think that that would be true of every church, but it actually isn't. Not every church values the Word like this church values the Word. We also offer ministries to the whole family. So we're not just concerned about adults. We're not just concerned about kids. We care about singles, young adults. We want to offer ministry to the whole family. Uh, We have a preschool that is just a rock star ministry. Um, Our marriage ministry is a rock star ministry, something that we're becoming known for. And the number one thing that unchurched people talked about when they talked about Central was our homeless ministry. The fact that we feed people every Thursday night over in the gallery. We also go out on the streets on Saturdays on occasion and bring lunches to people in our community. And so that's something we're known for, our care for the homeless and our fun family events and activities. Well, finally, there are opportunities for growth. What can we do better at? How can we grow? We have three. Matt's going to talk about them more in just a moment. The first is assimilation. Assimilation has to do with connecting people. We have 500 and something guests coming every year. The question is, how can we help them connect sooner? People are coming here because they want to connect with God and they want to connect with others. And we want to provide the space for connection to happen. We want to provide the opportunities for connection to happen. So that's one opportunity for growth. The second is an aging campus. We've been here for a long time. We want to make this place permanent. What can we do to make this more conducive for ministry? And finally is church planting. We've planted one church, but we live in a community of 500,000. How can we make a greater impact? Where else can we plant? That is my state of the church. I just want to tell you, it is a privilege and an honor to serve at Central. I love you. I feel like this is my family, and I'm just so grateful to belong to this body of Christ. I hope you're excited about 2019 and 2020, because I know I am. Thank you. Wow, thanks, Ricky. That was awesome. Um, so today, I understand there's a couple of football games so we're going to go ahead and get out early if you guys, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, buckle in. Um, my name is Matt Dumas, great to see you guys uh, this, this morning, and really, uh, it's awesome when you get a chance to reflect on what all God's done through you folks here uh, in this valley. Uh, it's really a, a privilege to see. This time of year, as, as Ricky said, not only do we the, do the state of the church from last year, it, it is a good time for us to reflect personally 
uh, on what God has uh, taught us over the last year. What are some lessons learned, good and bad? Uh, what, uh, I don't know, what are, what are some accomplishments that you've had? Maybe some frustrations? Uh, what, what, how are you doing in this thing called life? It's also a good time to look forward and, uh, for 2020 and to say, okay, so how can I do it better? What are, what are some things I can be more intentional about? How can I pursue some relationships in different ways? How can I grow closer to God this year? How can I finish strong? And we do that personally, but even as a church, as Ricky said, we have some opportunities to do that. And so as we look forward to as a church, uh, some of the things that, that I'm excited about us pursuing and, and kind of seeing what God's going to do with it is, one, um, creating these spaces on campus for connection. You know, we are a church of families. Ricky said it earlier, and I, I said, hmm. He said we're a church of all, what did he say, um, Families of all shapes and sizes. That's what he said. It. Shapes and sizes. I said, ah, some people don't like to be called all kinds of shapes and sizes. But, we, but it's true. We have families that have all different kinds of, uh, of mixture together. We have blended families, and we have single parent families, and we have nuclear families. We even have some that have cats. <laughs> we have all kinds of families here. One of the things that we know about families is that, that time is precious and it's in short supply. That folks are going uh, down below to work or they got all kinds of things going on with activities at home or at school or whatever. And, and so they need places for connection. They want to connect with other folks, but they have a hard time. They don't have the margin to do that. And so we're, we're going to try to create some, some areas of connection before, during, and after our weekend worship services. Uh, to do that, we're, we're going to pursue some more upgrades on campus. Now, uh, this past year, we did all this landscaping out there, and, and we timed it just right so that winter got here. And so you look out there and go, what landscaping? But I promise when, when, when the spring gets here, it's going to be beautiful, right? We'll have flowers and we'll have trees and all that with leaves on them. But, but landscaping, we're going to pursue some additional landscaping to make our campus more inviting to, for folks to come and, and create some seating places for, for folks to connect uh, during the services. Uh, how many of you, when you've gone out in the summer, have walked out those doors and thought you're going to catch on fire? Like the sun is beating down, and if you've tried to grab the handles coming in, you leave skin on the door because it's so hot. Well, we're going to uh, try to get a sh shade structure to cover that front area there. Um, children's building, we're, we've got lots of kids. We've been blessed with tons of kids, hundreds of kids every weekend. Not only do we have Learning Planet, but that children's building is packed all the time. But the, the playground is pretty small for that many kids, and so we want to expand the playground and, and maybe even put in an amphitheater over there. If you look around this building, uh, it's, it's over 20 years old. It's used uh, seven days a week almost, and, and it's starting to show its age a little bit. And so... So again, there you go. That would be awesome. Yeah, um, amphitheater for Grace Fest. Okay, uh, uh, but but uh, where was I? Upgrades. Yeah. So the the lobby and, and in here doing some renovation, maybe a coffee shop, all for the purpose of creating connection and helping people uh, find a place here at Central. But here's the thing. Main thing. We want to increase our sending capacity over our seating capacity. And what I mean by that is, uh, well, let's just do this. Thing. How many math people are in here? You've taken a math class before? <laughs> you know the difference between multiplication and addition? Okay, so, so how, do you, how do you get a bigger number, by multiplying or adding? Multiplying. Multiplying. Well, come on now. <laughs> All right, Brian. <laughs> By multiplying, right? You, you, when you multiply, and, and when we plant churches, we actually have a multiplying effect. Uh, Ricky said there's over half a million people in the AV. We've got maybe 1,400 of them that come on a weekend. How are we going to reach half a million people? Well, it's by planting churches. And so, so one of the things that we want to do is we want to increase the impact that we have by planting more churches here so we can, uh, again, reach different pockets of people that, that may not come to this campus, that we're limited, even as big as this campus is, we're limited by the space here. But if we plant churches, 
Uh, the sky's the limit. And so that's one of the things that I'm excited about. And, and, and to that end, we've hired a, a new pastor on staff, Chris and Kelsey, come on. And, and Chris's job, part of it is, is, is to help get folks connected here at Central. Uh, go ahead and do the... the <laughs> What did I call it? The pageant wave, yeah. The pageant wave. Um, it's to get folks connected here at Central, but then also to help us come up with a strategy for planting churches in the valley. Um, so we got a lot going on. And, and because we have a lot going on, we need to pray. And, and that's why it's fitting that this weekend, uh, our topic is prayer. Now, we're going to do something a little bit different. It's a little bit crazy. Are y'all ready for a little bit crazy? We're going to pray. I'm not going to preach. We're going to pray. And we're going to spend time singing songs. And I'm going to read some scripture. And we're going to pray. And that's going to be our service today. And here's the thing that I hope you see this as, as a gift for you. Unhurried time with your heavenly Father. That's what prayer is. It's time with your heavenly Father. Time to cry out to Him. Time to sing praises to Him. Time to just sit and be in His presence. It's time with your heavenly Father. And that's what we want to do this morning. And we're going to start. I'm going to pray over Chris and Kelsey. Taylor's not here. Oh, man. I scared her the first service, I guess. So I'm going to pray over them. And then I'm going to have you pray. And I'll give you instructions after that because it's too hard to remember. Okay, here we go. Father, I thank you for Chris and Kelsey. Lord, I thank you for uh, bringing them here to Central. I thank you for the way that you have gifted him, the passion that you've given him for people and for connecting people and reaching lost people. And Father, I pray that as we look forward to this next year and we see a valley full of people who are far from you, We know the work has a long way to go, and we just pray that, Father, you would give us the uh, wisdom, the discernment, Father, the passion to pursue people this next year. That, Father, we'd be known for our love. Not only would we be people of the book who, who, who uh, hold on to your truth, who, who value highly preaching the word, but we would be people who are known for our love. And Father, I pray that you help us in, in each and every moment. Not only would you use Chris, but, but Father, that, that each and every one of us has a story of, to tell of how you rescued us from death and brought us to life. And we have a valley full of people who need to hear that. Help us to be quick to share the hope that we have to to meet the needs that you present before us and to, to give our lives in serving you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I want to give you guys a chance to pray. Two things. First, I want you to pray that we'll continue to be a place where families feel like they belong where they feel connected, where they hear the word, they hear the truth, but not only do they hear the truth, that they find other families that they can connect with. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is for this going forward vision of planting churches, that, that God would provide not only locations, but leadership for each of those church plants as we look to see the gospel go out. And I'm going to give you a few minutes to pray for that.
But we're going to continue on in worship by going into our time of communion. And um, as I was listening to Ricky and I was listening to Matt talk about the past and what we're looking forward to in the, in the future, um, it reminded me that God was on mission for us and he's given us a mission. The Bible says that God was reconciling the world to himself through Jesus and he also gave us that ministry of reconciliation. So when we pause for communion, when we pause at the cross, we remember what Christ has done for us, that mission that he was on for us. He died for us, a death that we deserved. His blood was shed for us for the forgiveness of sins and he rose victoriously over the grave for us to have life now and forevermore. So we're gonna sing a few choruses and verses of a song. And then Matt's going to lead us through our elements. How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was drained away as with the fever heat of summer. Selah. I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Selah. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. Selah. So take a few moments and confess any sin that may be hindering your relationship with your Savior. And thank him for the salvation that he has given you. Take a few moments now.
While they were eating, Jesus took some bread and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. when he had taken a cup and given thanks he gave it to them saying drink from it all of you for this is is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins but I say to you I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. above all names, Jesus, for what you've done for us on the cross and for the life and liberty that we can know today because of that cross, because of the resurrection. And thank you that we can have confidence before the throne because of you, Jesus. And I pray that we would not just praise you for what you did on the cross, but we would remember all the things that you do on a daily basis, the things maybe we see or don't see, maybe the good things and the hard things there's always a reason to worship you and praise you and to bless your name. So we're here today to do that. For every spiritual blessing that we have past the cross and every resource in this life that we have too. God, we love you and pray these things in your name.
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. I worship His holy name. I'll sing like never before, oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared above all gods. For all, God, all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, strength and joy 
are in his place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord. The glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in holy array. Tremble before him all the earth. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. And let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea roar in all it contains. Let the field exult in all that is in it. Then the trees of the forest will sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself. According to the kind intention, of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished on us In all wisdom and insight, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his kind intention, which he purposed in him with a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of the times. That is the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things after the counsel of his will, to the end that we who were the first to hope in Christ would be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. It was given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession, to the praise of his glory. Take a few moments and praise this great and awesome God. The one who created the heavens and the earth. He's a big God, but also the one who created you the one who knows you intimately. We've got a card in your bulletin. If you want to write out that prayer, this is a great time to do that. But just spend some time praising God for who he is and what he's done in your life.
say you're good. Now tell the Lord that. When I said tell the Lord that, you were like, you're good. Go ahead and tell him you're good. Amen. It's great to hear the church sing, and it's great to hear the church say that. It's great to gather under that name and say the same thing together, because sometimes out in life, we think we're alone, we're individuals, but we're gathered amongst the body. We're family today. Amen. Before we sing, you're never going to let me go. You're never going to let me down. If you're like me, sometimes you struggle with that. You think because something hasn't happened yet that the Lord has let you down. Anybody like that? Raise your hand. Yeah. But he's good. And the psalmist gives us words for the times that we doubt. And he says, why soul are you so downcast? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him. He says, why soul are you downcast? He's talking to himself. Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him. It's your song today. Would you sing it out to him? And you're never gonna let
For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Uh, Now if you'll read this with me. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What do you need to ask God for? And what do you need to trust Him with? Spend a few minutes praying about that now. I want to continue worshiping the Lord by giving back to Him a portion of what He's given to us. Uh, this is the time of our service we take up the morning offering. And like I said, this is a chance for us to worship God, the, the one who has been so generous with us. It's a way to partner with us in, in our mission to transform families to live and love like Jesus. In a moment, the ushers will pass uh, the offering bags uh, down the aisles. If you were prepared to give this morning, that's great. If you want to, you can do it online at centralchristian.org. Uh, you can also put your Connect cards in there. 
And I'm going to pray over the morning offering. And when I get done, here's what I want to give you an opportunity to pray for. Just thank God. Thank God for his provision for your life. Thank God for the work that he's done through this body in this valley and the impact he's already had in 2019 and what he wants to do in 2020. Thank him for the impact that he's having in your own life and in your family's life. But let me pray first. Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you that you are a generous and a giving God. It started all the way back in Genesis and it goes all the way through the end of of Revelation. That over and over and over and over again, we see that your generosity. I love that passage from Paul that every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places has been bestowed on us and not stingingly, but lavishly. That you freely given to us. you sent your son to die in our place and you raised him on the third day so that we could have life with you forever and if that wasn't enough that each and every day you give us the breath that we breathe and that a thousand times in a day that you provide little things that we often overlook or don't even notice Yes, you are a giving God. You're a generous God. And I pray that we would be a generous people. Not just with our resources, Father, but with our time and with our uh, energy and with our talents and with all that we are, that we'd be generous people. And we reflect you well in Jesus' name. Now you guys pray. you can come forward. (laughs) Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the peoples. Sing to Him. Sing praises to Him. Speak of all His wonders. Glory in His holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face continually. Remember his wonderful deeds which he has done, his marvels and the judgments from his mouth. For this reason I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus which exists among you, and your love for all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, so that you will know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of His power toward us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. 
And he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And now, if you'll read with me. We give thanks to God always for all of you, making mention of you in our prayers, constantly bearing in mind your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of our God and Father, knowing, brethren, beloved by God, His choice of you.
out to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory and majesty, dominion and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. That's it. That's all we got for you today. If you need prayer, we'll have folks down at the, at the front that would love to pray with you. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you back next weekend.